Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the Welsh test in SPSS. I have here in the data editor, fictitious data, I have two variables, an independent variable. And it has three levels, psychodynamic, cognitive behavior therapy, and treatment as usual. And then I have a continuous variable named depression that contains scores from a depression inventory and let's assume that a lower score represents fewer depressive symptoms and a higher score represents more depressive symptoms. So one way we may analyze these data would be with a one-way ANOVA if we want to determine if there's a difference between the effectiveness of these three levels of independent variable. And we'll assume that all these scores are independent and before we start the one-way ANOVA, we'll test for normality in the dependent variable. So go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. The dependent list will be Depression. The factor list will be Treatment Group. And I'm not going to make any changes under Statistics or under Options. However, under Plots, I am going to uncheck Stem and Leaf and check off Histogram. And I'm also going to check off Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue and click OK. And this will provide us information about the depression variable across the levels of the independent variable. So if we have the mean and the confidence interval and other information for each level so for psychodynamic, CBT and treatment as usual. Of most interest, of course, will be the test of normality. And I'm going to interpret Shapiro-Wilk. And we can see that the CBT and treatment as usual levels have a non-statistically significant result. So based on just the Shapiro-Wilk, we would assume that the scores are normally distributed in those levels of the independent variable but we have a statistically significant finding for psychodynamic, so we would assume that we do not have a normal distribution there. Take a look at the histograms. So you see the histogram for psychodynamic does not quite look normal. There are, a lot, there are a lot of scores falling between 50 and 60, and not many between 30 and 50, or 60 and 70. Taking a look at CBT, this looks a little more normal. And treatment as usual, again, a little more normal. Take a look at the QQ plots. And what we're looking for here is that these points line up with the line, that they're on the line. And you can see for psychodynamic that there are a few points on the line and close to the line, but there's also a few that deviate a bit. For CBT, there's quite a few points in the line, one here that's quite a bit off. And for treatment as usual, again, a few that are a little off, but that lines up pretty well. So I'm going to run another test of normality on the entire variable depression, not divided by level. So again, descriptive statistics and explore. In this case, because it retains the settings, from the analysis that just took place. I'm just going to move treatment group back over to the left and click OK. And we can see we have a non-statistically significant finding for the depression variable overall. And again here if we look at histogram, it looks more or less normal, not perfectly normal, but does look like a normal distribution and the QQ plot. We have a point here, that's a bit off, but these points are fairly close to the line or on the line. So in a situation like this, if we take a look at the total N, we have 100. We have one level of the independent variable, psychodynamic, where the depression scores do not appear to be normally distributed. Two levels, CBT and treatment as usual, where they do appear normally distributed and over all the depression variable appears normally distributed. So I'm going to continue with the analysis even though 
we haven't strictly met the assumption for normality. It's fairly close, and ANOVA is robust to violations of normality. So now I'll move to Analyze, Compare Means, and One-Way ANOVA. And for the dependent list, for this list box, it'll be Depression. For the factor, it'll be Treatment Group. And I'm not going to make a selection for post hoc at this point, but I'm going to go to Options. And I'll put Descriptive, check off Descriptive, Homogeneity, a Variance Test, and Means Plot. Continue, and then click OK. So we can see here from the descriptives that we have unequal sample sizes, 31 for psychodynamic, 28 for CBT, and 41 for treatment as usual. And if we look at Levine's test, we have a p-value here of 0 0.014, which is less than 0 0.05, which means we assume we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So sometimes it's helpful with descriptives. I'm going to double-click this table. I'm just going to highlight the end, the mean, and the standard deviation, and right-click, create graph, then put in a bar graph. Sometimes it's a bit easier to interpret this way. You can see here clearly the unequal sample sizes, the means, of course, different, and the standard deviations are different. So if we move down, we have a p-value for the ANOVA, but because we violated the homogeneity of variances assumption and we have unequal sample sizes, we would be skeptical about the accuracy of this result. Now here for the means plots, I checked this off in the one-way ANOVA dialog. This just gives you another visual for seeing where the means are in relation to one another. So you can see the mean is high for psychodynamic, the lowest for CBT, and somewhere in the middle for treatment as usual. So because we have the unequal sample sizes and we violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances, I'm going to go back to analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA, then under options I'm going to add the Welsh test. This test is appropriate when you have unequal sample sizes and heterogeneity of variances. So I'm going to click Continue. And then for post hoc, we can see equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed. And when you have heterogeneity of variances, that would be equal variances not assumed. So I'm going to add the Games Howell post hoc test here. Click Continue, and then click OK. And of course, not surprisingly, we get the same data, except for now we have the Welsh test, and that has a significance of 0 0.013, and we will interpret this, and this is statistically significant. So we know there's a statistically significant difference between the levels of the independent variable but we don't know where that difference is until we look at post hoc test. And we can see here from the Games Howell post hoc test that the only statistically significant difference is between the psychodynamic treatment group and the CBT treatment group at 0 0.01. There is no statistically significant difference between psychodynamic and treatment as usual or CBT and treatment as usual. I hope you found this video on using the Welsh test in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.